Good evening, TOL members, and welcome to the Stock Swing Trader. This is the market outlook for the week, uh, starting with uh, August 12, 2024. First of all, I just want to highlight that we have option expiration this week on Friday, and that is going to um, add on another layer of volatility to the overall price action. Plus, we have some very important inflation data that is coming in Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday, we have unemployment claims. So therefore, Tuesday, we have the PPI numbers, and on Wednesday, we have the CPI numbers. So it's going to be a high-pressure environment. So far, the price action has had a really nice response off of uh, the current bottoms, um, the cues, and we're going to start uh, diving right into charts. So we have a double bottom formation. This is actually a bit of a, a little bit of a lifted higher low in this context, but we're nowhere near um, outside of the turbulent zone. We are still under the major moving averages, which means that we're still under heavy selling pressure uh, that can potentially come in at any time, depending on what those numbers uh, and how those numbers are going to impact the market. Today was a relatively flat day. We ended in a doji. We advanced a little bit higher, so this was progress, but we stalled into um, prior resistance, so exactly into this prior resistance and actually into the low from July 30th. Um, like I said, the numbers tomorrow are going to create more volatility and tomorrow we could potentially uh, see either a continuation higher above today's high that may uh, tackle these moving averages as we're moving higher or what could potentially happen is if we turn around, I think that if we actually create a lower high, so basically if we start trading below um, today's low, uh, this is going actually to um, put a dent into the market as this could potentially be uh, the next lower uh, high in the market. So therefore, we may be heading towards a down move. So therefore, we may be selling off a little bit more. So, so far, we have a high. We do have two lower highs. This would actually be the third lower high. But if you look at the overall market, this is still a, a very strong uptrend. This is just an abrupt pullback, but this is still a super solid area. If this area is not going to hold, obviously we're going to fall and we're going to get into most likely uh, a downtrend. But so far, this is a downtrend onto the daily, but it's not in the downtrend yet in the sense that we should start shorting everything because it's still sustained by this massive pivot low that we had um, uh, for in uh, April. So things are still holding here. So this is relatively good. So tomorrow, two levels to watch. Uh, if we are going to start trading above today's high, so let's say 454.75, we're going to start moving higher. Uh, and if we don't, and if we turn around and we, if we actually breach today's low, which would not be very hard because this is literally a doji here that we had today. So under 448, we could start moving lower back again and retest of the 200 SMA. Very problematic area into the market. And in fact, I did uh, mention last week that, um, you know, half size in trades or even less than half size would be okay. Uh, because of the risk. But again, it's up to your risk tolerance. And um, this is, you know, just a little um, um, advice, piece of advice, because we're not yet into an uptrend. So therefore, we're betting on squeezes. So we're betting on buyers, investors, getting back in at these low levels to push the price higher. I mean, we would, we literally have very, very early entries. All right, so let's take a look at the spies. A spies into a massive minor support zone, already uh, creating the doji as well um, as the cues. Uh, really nice recovery so far, but we're still back into this prior resistance here. So let's see how we digest this. These numbers that are coming out Tuesday and Wednesdays are Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be definite. Uh, because it's a doji, it could be bullish above or bearish below. Um, yeah, today's low. So if we break above, uh, we're going to start moving higher and chewing some of these moving averages out. And if we don't, and if we turn around, 
Now, here's the thing that I didn't mention in the cues, but it is possible in the cues, it's possible in the spies, and it's possible throughout all of the trades that um, we scanned for and we found setups for, um, for the month of August. The problem is that even if we have a sell, this cell we don't really know how long this cell is going to be lived because we could have a cell formation right so we could have let's say two to three let's say bearish days and never tackle the prior low here from the uh mega downward move on august 5th actually the tape bomb and we could actually see it turning around okay so we could have a shallow pullback and then a rotation without revisiting this low, or we could have a revisit of this low and punch down lower. So again, it's kind of like 50, 50, every, everything that you look at and every chart that you look at is pretty much a 50, 50 shot at this point. Uh, let's take a look at the diamonds. Uh, we discussed diamonds uh, last week as well. And we looked at this doji that we had. And you could see here that we have a lot of price compression. And we finally exploded a little bit higher on Friday. And today we tried to tackle the high. We were really successful um, on taking the high from Friday and the Dow, but it's an inside candle. So this reinforces our theory that if we break above, we're going to move higher. And if we break below, we're going to start moving lower. The question is, I mean, I don't have a problem with the uh, with the upside. And I think that would be uh, better for this chart structure. The downside is the one that is creating the problems because the downside uh, is coming in from this very massive structure that is uptrending. And this is a massive base here that has uptrending lows. So it'll be very hard to determine whether uh, we're going to get this sell. How deep of a sell is it going to be? Is it going to go, let's say, 50% 50, 50 into this measure move from this swing low to this swing high? Is it going to go 75% or is it going to break this, break the 200 SMA and then start moving lower? I think the biggest problem in the diamonds would be a break of the 200 SMA. And you actually saw, for example, on the same daily charts and the cues that, yeah, we do violate this space a little bit, but we zip back up again. And you see, you saw it into the spice as well. The price action is still above the 200 SMA. So here is uh, the diamonds with the 200 SMA right here. So these would be the levels that I would look at. I would Love it if we could start moving higher from here. But again, I'm not a true believer on the downside just yet, as long as we're still holding above the 200 simple moving average. Let's take a look at IWM. At IWM, we had some levels that were pinned in um, uh, last week, exactly a week ago when we released the video. And what we see here is exactly a pullback to the 200 SMA. And we saw the rotation here and we talked about this candle. This is exactly a week ago. And we discussed about the fact that if we move higher, we could be bullish all the way into the low here that we had into this uh, fall and into the location of the 50 SMA. And now it's a matter of can we digest this 50 SMA, close a little bit higher, and then we could have some more room. But again, it's not going to be a lot, but it's going to take baby steps to take it back into the resistance that was formed from these prior highs. And this is from May 2024 and this from March 2024. So this would be the step right here. Again, I'm not very excited about uh, today's action. I'm not very excited. But here's the thing. Today's action, right? Let me zoom it in so you guys could see it, right? This is today's action. Yeah, it was a little bit more bearish than it was the Qs. Yeah, because we have a red bar and we're in the spies. But here's the thing. We're back into the trigger that we had. So we're back into the trigger point from last week. So basically, we're at the same level that we were last week. So nothing literally has changed from then, right? So we're back to ground zero again. And I think that this time around, we should be looking at these tops here that we have from the 50 SMA. We start moving above 208. We're going to start moving higher. And again, we still have some uh, uh, resistance from this declining 10 EMA, right? And this is, you know, the more we sit below the uh, 10 EMA, the more bearish we become. I mean, this is a fact. I mean, this is going to force the price to go down. 
However, if the price is going to turn around, let's say tomorrow based on the numbers, because the, the CPI numbers and the PPI numbers are literally freaking out traders and investors, because uh, that's, and I, I see that as being the only reason why we didn't really accelerate from as a basic short squeeze within this massive uptrend um, last week. So we should have done it, but we had a little bit of progress, but not so much because we're still uh, heading into resistance zones and we need to digest these zones. So if these numbers are in sync with the current uptrend, then yeah, the move is going to continue higher. But again, we still have to look at the geopolitical context. I mean, and I know we talked about it last time and I showed you that when the U.S. attacked Iraq back in 2003, it was in March 2003, the market didn't really binge. It didn't do anything. And it, it, a couple of weeks from then, it just started to move higher. So it was not a big deal for the market, for the U.S. economy. Um, and let's hope that this is going to be a repeat of what, what was. And that's not really going to affect what's going on in the U.S. and in the market and with the economy, with stocks. It's not going to be any kind of slowdown. It depends on you know, how contained the, um, the conflict is going to be. Anyways, back on track here with, uh, uh, with the analysis. Uh, let's take a look at bonds because the bonds are actually looking really sharp. And this is a weekly chart. I know we've talked about, you know, bonds last week as well. They broke out again. Yes, I didn't get into them. Uh, but I do like the daily. Okay, so let me just take this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it on. Okay, so let's talk about this. I think that the bonds may have a good chance of breaking out over 96.83, 96.90, even 97 acceptable entry. So anything that is above 96.90 is acceptable for an entry. We would have the support into minor support, which would support the uptrending action. And we would shoot for a target back into the 100, back into this high right here. We didn't really reach 100. This uh, this high right here was 99.99, but it was darn close. So yes, it was the resistance area. So make sure that when you are setting targets, uh, the targets are the area around that number. So whether it's five to seven cents around that area or 10 cents, depending on if you have a small stock, two to three cents is fine. But if you have a high price stocks, I don't know, like uh, NVIDIA or um, uh, SM, uh, SMCI or something like that, then um, uh, obviously there's going to be around 10 cents, 10, 50 cents around the target zone. Um, right. So this is TLT. Let's take a look at gold. Um, you know, take a look at the overall market, at the structure. Gold, uh, fairly strong. And... Uh, it's actually moving really well. We do have the entry into 225.75. Uh, and uh, today, uh, we didn't quite make it to target two, but we're darn close to it. We came back to 228, uh, which we actually punched and revisited again. But we, then we had the pullback again, and then we had the rotation again. Uh, but we're looking for 230 this week to see if we can blast it. And by the way, this could potentially be a massive breakout zone here into the 229.50, 229.70. Uh, and it could start really punching higher. Let's take a look at USO. USO, big ramp up. Like I said, I'm still holding USO for me. It's a core trade till after election. Um, and, um, uh, I've let, I've, um, uh, initiated the position last year. So it was like spring or summer of last year. So I'm still into, it. I haven't made any changes, uh, uh, so far, uh, to the, uh, to the original trade other than, other than the ones that we've discussed, um, in our sessions. But I'm going to tell you this, this is the monthly chart, and this is a really super tight contraction, especially for March. And we have had we have been above this 20 SMA really, really well. And we have tested it in June. And since then, we have you literally we're standing above it, above it. So I would say because the situation of where we are right now with price, if we manage to break 82.60, let's say this week, next week, anyways, until the end of the month, right? Um, there's a very strong potential that we're going to escape higher to 92 uh, and $100. So these look super, super, super strong. 
All right, now I want to bring Home Depot in. Home Depot is going to report tomorrow before the market opens. And I do have an open position in Home Depot. And um, I, at this point, I mean, we have to stay in it. Uh, we have to make sure that, you know, we live through it. Uh, let's see how we perform. Typically, um, Home Depot has a pretty good um, uh, uh, track record of beating throughout the summer period. Okay, so uh, let's see if uh, this is going to be uh, the case. Um, structure wise, it is positioned for higher. This is the weekly chart. It has been uh, above the 200 SMA. So uh, in the event it's going to drop some more, then we're going to be looking to add to get a better average on our price. But other than that, I'm not going to make any changes to it. Uh, we did post uh, some new setups today and I'm going to go through them. Uh, Kava was the first one. Kava Group um, $92 and, uh, 75 cents. It did not receive, uh, any, uh, any triggers today. We're going to be waiting tomorrow. If not, we're going to evaluate it and see if it's worth keeping it or not, uh, active on our trades. It has the first potential to run into this 98. And then after 98, hundred, it, it has a very strong structure. This is the monthly, and this is what I really liked about it because it has been hovering into these highs. It looks very explosive, and it looks like it's on its own. It's not waiting in on the market or anything. Uh, next one, NVIDIA. Um, like I said, with uh, in NVIDIA, I'm not using stops. I mean, I'm calling stops. If you guys want to take stops, that's fine. Um, and I think maybe at one point we should have a lecture about this. And... Uh, you know, tell you a little bit more um, about, you know, institutions, how they're running stops when they want to, uh, they're for selling so they could get um, more contracts or more shares into it. So I think I'm going to attach a little link here to this uh, email uh, with uh, uh, Jim Cramer in an interview years ago. Okay, so... Uh, it may uh, it may bring some a little bit more clarity. Make sure that you're always very comfortable with your position. Make sure you're not oversized because that is going to produce you know um, you know a lot of uh, um, um, I would say uh, you would feel a lot uh, so much uncomfortable, right? So make sure you have a good size. You manage it. Okay, so uh, Nvidia is still again. We got the trigger in Nvidia, and we actually had our target one at one ten today. It had a high of one eleven oh seven, and it tapped into the first uh, moving average right here. So we need to see how well it's going to react tomorrow. I mean, everybody's freaked out about the CPI numbers, PPI numbers, and being option expiration uh, week. So. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be rather difficult to trade this week. Uh, we have QCOM um, that um, um, QCOM had received some kind of negative or, uh, negative uh, um, um, rumors today uh, and some negative news, not rumors. Uh, but I still like it over $166 and uh, we're going to get it. It has not triggered today, but uh, let's hope tomorrow it's going to trigger. Uh, Intel. Intel is a name that has been in the news and has been on CNBC and they have been talking about it a lot. Um, now, here's the thing. I think it's super bullish for a squeeze. Uh, and this is the daily chart. The weekly chart looks even better. And this is what we're going to be trading. Uh, so if it takes out last week's high, we're going to go for a zip higher, $24 and even higher. Let's see if we could take it, uh, take Intel higher. Uh, so Intel looks very good. Uh, Meta, again, uh, we discussed Meta last week and I share some of my opinions on Meta. Um, Meta being a really a fruitful path platform for advertisers. And I think Meta is going to do really well throughout this year and this quarter and next quarter and especially into the first quarter where it's going to report um, in January, the uh, four, fourth quarter. Uh, and it's looking very strong. Uh, today's high was almost 520. Uh, 519 is our entry. Uh, and uh, we're going to be looking for some highs over here. Let me show you just a chart on the monthly, right? So we're going to be shooting for this 540 high. Um, 
And so let's see if we could take it a little bit higher than that, but it all depends on the context. <laughs> Let us see. All right, so technically speaking, this is what the price should do. All right, we have pins. Pins is also a short squeeze, just like Intel, same strategy. So we're gonna try to squeeze it a little bit higher. This one triggered, so we're gonna look. See all these amazes that we have here and all the prior lows that we have on the technical chart, and this is just a daily. Uh, these are going to represent resistance. If we look on the weekly here, uh, this looks even a little better because we also have another high here. So uh, once again, if you want to, you know, get in, let's say, in pins, um, and if you want to add to pins, for example, over this $30, you can do that. So current entry is $29.80. So, I mean, it, it truly wouldn't really matter that much, but... Uh, the technique behind it would be like getting on the daily and then add on the weekly. Um, also, PLTR. Okay, PLTR also has been in the news uh, quite a lot. It has reached target one or entry $28. So far doing well. A uh, little bit of reversal candle here. Let's see how tomorrow uh, trading, how tomorrow's trading day is going to be. Coca-Cola, these are safer names, uh, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble. And in any case, I just want to highlight uh, one thing, like in case of recession or in case of, you know, something, you know, along those lines, these are going to be stocks that we have to have on our watch list, like Kroger, Safeway, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Clorox. These are the companies that uh, may thrive. I actually haven't looked at Clorox, CLX, in, a, in a so, so long. Ooh, really nice. Uh, yeah, sitting on the 200 SMA. See, these are boring stocks. These are the boring stocks. But anyways, uh, Costco, Costco, what can I say? Costco, really good. Our entry, $833.20. We actually have a first target, really bold. <laughs> $890. That's what the charts are showing us. That's where the target should be. It's already trading a higher. Uh, today it had a high of $870. Ooh, nice, right? Considering our entry, $833, we're doing pretty darn good. And Apple. Okay, Apple doing really well. Apple has hit three of our targets. We have another target into the 220. We, we got there quite, quite close. Uh, for today, really close for today. Today we had 119.51, so we have one more target in, in, in Apple. I would like to keep a, a position open in Apple and trail it a little bit tighter um, as we go. But again, tomorrow is going to be a huge decision day for the markets, and we'll see what tomorrow is, is going to bring. Like I said, um, if you have any questions, feel free to email um, us at info at tradeallout.com. Uh, again, don't forget tomorrow news, pre-market, 8.30, Wednesday, pre-market uh, numbers, and Thursday, pre-market numbers. And Friday, we have the option expiration day. Uh, definitely, as always, we can, what, what we can expect is a big move up, a big move down, and a whole lot of sideways in between. So today, we were relatively sideways looking at Apple, looking at the Qs, looking at the Spice. I mean, we were very, very neutral. So let's hope that the neutral side was here. And let's hope that the downside is going to come towards the end of the week and to give some time to, to these stocks to uh, have positive now contingent, we have positive numbers, CPI, PPI numbers that are aligned with the structure and the trend of the market. And then we can start selling off and taking some profits on Friday. I would love that scenario. So let's hope for the best. Thanks so much, everybody. I will see you guys next week with a brand new video.